Women listen so much to other women. And these other women are miserable. We have all these problems, but we like listening to other women because misery loves company. Now look. Look at those women who are actually destabilizing the family union. They are really struggling with family. They came from families that are actually broken. So th that is what they understand. They don't, they don't understand the nature and the order of God. And there's nothing like God in Christianity. It's just God. God is God. Whether Islam, Christianity, Hinduism, it doesn't matter. So women who are actually struggling with marriage are the ones who are actually pulling women who are in marriage out of marriage. Now women start to think that out of marriage the grass is greener. Trust me you, when you're in marriage, all of us who are not married will give you the attention that you want. We, ah, we will tell you how you look good today because your husband, we know, your husband did not say it in the morning. We will take that responsibility because we know having sex with a married woman, there's no responsibility. There's no responsibility. We know we are coming here to ejaculate. If you get pregnant, you'll sort it yourself. You get the point? So we are coming in to have our fun. We don't even care. If I don't satisfy you, who, who, who cares? I mean, you, you're not mine. You're somebody else's. I'm just... And men... Listen to this. Listen to this. Men will not take your woman. No, men don't take away your woman. What they do is they pick her, they give her a good time, and then they bring her back. Hello? Men pick your woman, they give her a good time, and then they bring her back. But women can take your man. If a woman wants your man, she will take your man. And she will be willing to even destroy you to maintain that man. Because she knows the value of that man. So most of the times, a woman is giving you advice about marriage. Be very careful. Because her advice is centered on emotions. And remember, you cannot separate emotions from a woman. Whether she's a psychologist or whatever she is, psychologists are actually suffering in marriages. They're actually be having it rough in marriages. It's rough for them in marriages. So then this somebody who is having a problem in marriage and she wants to tell you about how to satisfy your man in bed. She's actually going to regurgitate porn to you. She's going to tell you how she watched the porn video. How she has done research on the reproductive organs. She has done research on reproductive organs that you have. You can actually do a research on your own. Now remember marriage is for two. For three is a crowd. So by the time a woman is trying to get out to seek advice, marital advice, from another man, it means this man here is a male. He stopped making sense. So the other man is the one who is actually considered. And that's why I told you, women can only handle one man in their head. They can handle multiple men around them physically, but they cannot handle two men in their head. So if she cheats on a man, she wanted to do it. She actually thought about it and contemplated it. Yes, yes, uh, Mofrika. Uh, I hope you can hear me. I can hear you loud and clear. Uh, I do have a few questions. Go ahead, bro. And um, I've heard you say about the benefits of semen detention. Yes. Now, my question is, mm -hmm. does more sex strengthen the penis? More sex? Yeah. Okay. This, the, the more frequency you have it, does it strengthen the penis? That's a good question. But allow me to ask you a question uh, before I answer that question, okay? What, what what do you define as strong penis? Uh, let me... <laughs> That's a difficult question to answer. Good. Another question. <laughs> from my own definition... Yes. From my own, from my own definition... Yes. Let's say that you can hold an election mm -hmm. until satisfaction, both of you are satisfied. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe I can explain it that way. Okay, you see, if you don't, if you cannot hold an erection to a process of satisfactory sex, what does that mean? It means you are suffering from erectile dysfunction. So how can multiple sex help you treat erectile dysfunction? I mean, I didn't mean multiple. Mm. But I mean the frequency of it. But that's multiple sex, like you're having multiple sex occasions. With one pattern, or just one pattern. Yes, no problem, but multiple sex with the same person. Yeah. So, so if you are having erectile dysfunction, how will multiple sex with the same partner change that? Can it? Uh, I'm not sure. Just a question that I, I thought of. No problem. I, someone say. I understand you clearly. So let, let me try and make it easier for you, okay? Between, between a teenager 
and a guy in 40s who has more sexual energy uh, i think the guy in <laughs> maybe a teenager i guess why Uh, I guess because a teenager is more active than a guy who is in forties. No, because their testosterones are very high. That is one. And number two, they are actually trying to have multiple sex as they grow up. By the time you are getting to forty, you have more sex than the guy who is at nineteen, right? Unless otherwise. True or false? Okay. True. That is true. So if a guy at forty has had all these sex experiences, and now he's settled in marriage. And this guy who is a teenager who is just trying to have his first occasions of sex is vibrant is trying to do everything to just make sure that he gets into the sexual marketplace. Why is it that this one at 40 is having low energy when he has had multiple sex occurrences? Is it hitting is it is it is it ringing a bell? So the more the sex, do you get weaker or do you get stronger? Uh I guess the more you have it, mm -hmm. I guess you get used to it. I guess it becomes weaker. Yes, I and <laughs> and but understand this: that is not about the sex; it's about the ejaculation. So the more the ejaculation, the lesser the testosterone, the weaker you become. That's why you should you say that we should retain your semen. Retain your semen. So a guy at 40, he has had it all, all the ejaculation. He has wasted the manhood, the masculinity, the muscle, the testosterone. And now he's growing weaker and weaker. And now he has to settle down with this one woman for the lifetime. But of course, he is having other multiple partners outside that marriage, which we don't encourage. But this is the reality. The reality is the more you ejaculate, the weaker you become. So for you to become stronger and retain your sexual power and retain your ability to satisfy a woman, even at 40, Ejaculation is only supposed to be reserved when you want to make a woman pregnant. Okay, I understand that. Next question. Uh, the next question. Yeah. Uh, I think I read somewhere, somewhere I heard someone say mm -hmm. about the effect of bananas. Yes. Do bananas boost energy or increase the performance in bed? No. Why? Because bananas are fructose. Fructose is a sugar. That fructose will be converted to fat in the liver to give you a fatty liver. The fatty liver will give you obesity. Obesity is a negative impact to testosterone because the fatter you become, the lesser active sexually you become as a man because you lower your testosterone. So sugar is an enemy to sexual life uh, activity. Also remember, sugar blocks the blood flow towards the penis and that gives you weak erections because for you to get an erection, you must have blood flow towards the penis. Number three, sugar destroys the nerves. And for you to get an erection, you need nervous transmission and supply towards the penis. So if you don't have functioning nerves, if you don't have blood supply towards the, the, uh, uh, the penis, and if you don't have enough testosterone because of fatting, uh, being fat, you end up uh, becoming a weak man. So therefore, bananas are a no. Okay, now the next question. Yeah. Uh, I find a lot of people talk about the, the food that men should eat yeah, to boost their libido. Yes. Do you women also have the food that they should eat? To boost their libido. There is nothing like boosting your libido. You can't you can't you, you simply boost testosterone. And how do you boost testosterone? Eat high protein diet, minimize on the carbohydrates and make them the complex carbohydrates, drop the sugars totally and the inflammatory foods, the seed oils, the wheat products, and, and the sugars, and basically whether natural or synthetic sugars. Start fasting to boost your testosterone. Go to the gym at least three to two to four times a week so that you can boost the muscles of erection and ejaculation and also boost your testosterone. Uh, take cold showers, enjoy the sun to stabilize your hormones, ease up on stress in your life. Ah, that's it. And then uh, have sex without ejaculating. Testosterone, for you to get testosterone, you need fats, animal fats. So drop every single vegetable oil. It's an inflammatory food. So simply go to the saturated fats, the animal fats, the coconut oil, and all that. Do away with the vegetable oils, totally. Okay. Good. I guess... You're asking my questions. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you for that conversation. I appreciate you, bro. That is more freaker, more freaker. Do not be lied to that bananas. Just because it looks like the banana, the banana will boost that energy. No. <laughs> no. Bananas will actually end you in a pit, brother. 
there was a guy who I saw who was saying uh, you can get distraction. So he had a point because he said for you to actually uh, perform best in sex, you can get a distraction by just eating a banana during the sex process. That's a good idea, but eating bananas will actually, in the long run, will give you problems. So you'd rather snack on the nuts. I don't, can you hear me? I can hear you, bro, but raise your voice a little bit. Oh, my question. Okay. I can see guys are just beating around the bush. Okay. I want to be very personal about this. Let's, let's go. So there is an issue here with the performance anxiety. Mm -hmm. And we're not understanding where it is coming from. Okay. But uh, from my experience, yes, I've had uh, several instances of uh, ED. Yeah. And I've been wondering why that is happening to me, being that I'm just uh, 29, 30. Mm. And you know, this thing is really, has really disturbed me a lot. So I took an initiative, went to Kenyatta, mm. and they recommended some tests. I did testosterone test. They took a lot of uh, blood samples. Mm -hmm. They took urine samples. But when the test results came, everything was negative. Mm. So they told me that uh, I need to see a urologist. Okay. And uh, I didn't have, I, I, was, I didn't get a chance actually to see a uro urologist because of the the current mandamanos. Mm -hmm. Because guys were flooding the emergency uh, unit, so I was not able to to see the urologist. So they, I, I took some break. Mm -hmm. Now, when I came back home, I was so much disturbed. So I, I told my wife, you see, this thing has been a problem because we had talked about it. And she told me, you just go, maybe you have a, a chronic condition or something like that. Mm -hmm. But this thing has led me to performance anxiety. And I don't, I don't know what really happens. Yeah. But when I'm good, when everything is calm, I, I, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. I can go for 30 minutes. I can go for one hour. Yeah. You know, but I've been following your your lives. I've been following your your recordings, and so I just say tonight, let me just hear from you because from the conversation and from the people who have talked here, you're saying if you introduce a third party, like a psychologist or something like that, yeah. that's a whole mess. Mm -hmm. So let me hear from you. Okay, what do you want to How hear do you from deal me? With this performance anxiety. Oh, performance anxiety. Now, bro, first things first. You are married, right? Yes. How how long have you been married? Let's say seven years. Seven years. So in these seven years, you had one sexual partner for seven years straight. Uh, during college, I had one, but not several occasions. Just once. But okay. Most of the time, we've been uh, together. So if you've had one woman uh, for marriage for seven years, tell me where the anxiety is coming from. Yet this is a woman you understand and you know better. You actually started with her, so you know her weak points, you know her strengths, you know how far she can go in bed. So where does the anxiety come from? The failure sometimes, you know, you, you want to do this thing, you prepared this person, but when you come to bed, this thing fails. It's not rising to the occasion. That's the point. Now you see, Failing to rise to the occasion is now a condition. That's an erectile dysfunction. Now, we try to hide in the anxiety, the performance anxiety, but the reality is we are suffering from an erectile dysfunction problem. So, let me ask you some few questions here and there. What is your body weight? Okay, my body weight right now is 79. 79 kgs. Do, do, do you consume sugar in any form? Yeah, um... Actually, I dropped uh, uh, sugar, the, the, the sukari one, mm. but chapati is maybe once or twice in a month. So you consume wheat products? Yeah, wheat products, yes. What is your cooking oil? Cooking oil, the just the regular cooking oil, this one of... 0% uh, cholesterol, right? Not 0% cholesterol. The kawaida ones are the vegetable oil. The kawaida. Vegetable oil, right? The liquid ones, the ones that yes. are in yellow containers. Yes. Good. How often do you exercise? In a week. How many times? Thrice. Okay. Three times. Okay. Do you struggle with sleep? 
Yes, I do online writing. So most of the time I'm seated, uh, I sleep like four hours, sometimes two hours, you mm. know, some, sometimes. So sleep is an issue. Good. So since you're doing online, write, online writing, do you think that online writing is a stressful job to you? Yeah, the nature of that job actually, people who have done it, it's really stressing. So you, you stay for long, you do revisions, those things, yeah. Good. So, when was the last time you fasted intentionally, basically beyond 24 hours? Intentionally, once, mm -hmm. once in a month, once. Okay. So how many that meals? That was two months ago. Okay. How many meals do you do in a day? I regularly, three meals, but I skip at least a... Uh, a meal once in a week i skip a meal do you snack in between snack rarely what is your favorite fruit my favorite fruit is uh, watermelon watermelon how often do you do it like twice no. in a day okay and how often do you do you have sex with your wife in a week week uh, twice twice or thrice mm. twice Thrice there. Is this intentional we sex can't, or is it? Oh, okay, okay. Now, uh, for those of us who have been here for the longest period of time, they will tell you your problem is not anxiety or performance anxiety. No, your problem is the diet, bro. You are actually feeding estrogen. A man has two hormones: one is estrogen, the other one is testosterone. All the questions that I've been asking you are actually leading to the things that actually feed estrogen. So basically, you're trying to seek validation from the hospitals, from doctors, from the urologists. Be lucky that you did not find a chance to see the urologist so you can save the money and go and fix the kitchen. Because however much or however, how, it doesn't matter how many doctors you will see and urologists you will see. You already see there's no diagnosis so far, but you're still having erectile dysfunction at 30 years old. And at 30 years old, 79 kgs, that is on the higher side. We don't, we don't know your height, but we'll tell you this for free. What are the things that actually destroy your sexual life and they lower your, your testosterone levels? Number one is sugar in all forms, including fruits and honey. You're consuming sugar, you're consuming fruits, and all these are sugars. Do you eat ugali and rice? Yes, yes, yes. That is another sugar. Ugali, so, rice. ugali and rice, whether it's for the portion meal or whether it's the brown ugali, all that is a carbohydrate, that is sugar. So you're suffering from a sugar problem. Number two, you're consuming seed oils that are inflammatory and that destabilize your testosterone levels. Number three, you're feeding yourself with wheat products that actually affect your gut integrity, so therefore you cannot absorb nutrients from diets adequately. Another one is, you exercise, yes, but what exercises do you do in the gym? Do you run on a treadmill? Uh, sometimes aerobics, I do uh, uh, biceps, triceps, sometimes bench. Mm. So I usually prefer bench mm -hmm. and uh, triceps. Uh, once in a week at least I do aerobics. To Good. Weight. Now you see, those are the exercises that all of us go to the gym to do. But the reality is, if you're going to the gym as a man, you're supposed to go to the gym to train for the compound exercises. I mentioned them in my videos on YouTube. One is the deadlift. Two is the bench press. Both the flat one and the incline one, not the decline one. Three is the squats. Four is the overhead shoulder press. Five is the pull-up. Six is the bend over rows. These are the exercises that you specifically do in the gym to make sure that you boost your testosterone. Now, the gym is not fun. The gym is not going there to just jump for 30 minutes and run the treadmill. The gym was designed to mimic activities that we do on a daily basis. Ben, settle down, settle down. Please settle down. The gym was repeat the, the, the exercises there. Squatting. The six exercises. Deadlift. Uh -huh. Bend over rows. Bench press, both incline and flat. Squats. Overhead shoulder press. And even the pull-up. These are exercises that actually train more than three muscles in your body. They will boost your testosterone immensely. They will help you strengthen the muscles. And also you can do the, key, the kegels and also the hip thrust to just strengthen the muscles on the floor of the pelvic so that you can have these strong erections and even ejaculation muscles. And then change these diets. Drop the sugar totally. You don't need sugar. Drop the carbohydrates totally. Change them actually to the complex carbohydrates. Instead of ugali, rice, and chapati, go and do the sweet potatoes, the green bananas, the butternuts, the arrowroots, the beans, and all that. Then combine that with fatty meats, the animal proteins. Do away with the plant-based proteins and concentrate on the animal proteins. 
enjoy the fatty meats, enjoy every red and white meat, eat them in plenty, eat eggs in plenty, six to eight eggs a day as a man. Enjoy the vitamins, enjoy also the, the what else, the spices, the organic spices. Once you do that, you will have dropped all these things and then you start fixing the gut. And then use animal fats to cook, the ghee, the tallow, the coconut oil also can be used. The lard, use those for cooking instead of using the kawaida, mafuta ya kawaida. That is not kawaida, it's very unusual and it's very bad for your gut. Once you've done that, you will fix the gut. When you fix the gut, you start to absorb nutrients from food adequately. And now, don't be eating three meals a day. Simply eat either one meal a day in the evening or eat two meals at noon and in the evening. So that you have a gap between the meals. Don't snack in between. Rehydrate with salt and water. On the weekends, you say it in weekend, you know, baby. go out and basically just enjoy the sun. Bask and enjoy the sun. Sleep, because when you start to fix your gut by dropping these foods and fasting, sleep will start to come. When you start to sleep now, your job does not matter right now. What matters is your health, because without your health, that job is not going to be functional. So simply fix your health, and then the job comes secondary. So your health is your first wealth, which basically means when you drop these foods, you fix the gut, you start enjoying these foods, you start absorbing food, you start fasting, and then your sleep will come automatically. Go and have six and eight to eight hours of sleep. And then whatever you can't do, don't do it, because you need to lower your stress levels. And then as you have sex, do not prioritize ejaculation. You don't need to ejaculation all the time. Simply have sex with her, do not ejaculate. That one time you have the energy to have sex, do not ejaculate. Hold back the ejaculation. Get the orgasm, but do not ejaculate. Don't come. Simply hold back. Let it go back. Relax. Distract yourself. Through that, you will pound this woman satisfactorily. And then be patient with yourself. Because at th from, from the time you were born all the way to 30, you've been eating all the unhealthy foods. So you've messed up your system, but now the beauty about the system is it has to fix itself slowly but perfectly. So simply take time, be patient, be consistent about it, and then just go into it, walk into it, and learn through the process. And then I'll stick on this platform so that you can get more information about these things. And through that, your woman will be a happy woman. But as you go to the urologist and you go to Kenyatta and whatever hospital and the, whatever psychologist you want to go to, they're not going to change your situation. They're just going to put you on medication after medication. Now you'll be put on the sildenafil. You'll use sildenafil to start messing your blood pressures. And the next thing, admission after admission, kidogo, oh, this, oh, that. Please, change your diet and your kitchen totally, start fasting and sleep. And also rehydrate with salt and water. Is that difficult to do? Not really, not Good. really. So there's no need of seeing those uh, psychologists or psychiatrists. Bro, no, psychology, no, psych, no psychologist is coming to change your kitchen. I just did. Yeah. And, then, and then go on my YouTube channel, okay. Health and Wellness Sport. Search for the video that is labeled Diet Plan. Diet plan, health and wellness sport, diet plan, just them diet plan, and just follow what it's saying. Thank me later. One last question. Yeah. What about this thing with the women? Because sometimes I see like, okay, if, if you're not, you're not uh, having erection, and uh, they, they just don't want you to, to touch them, the foreplay issue is not there completely. Well, they, now, now I understand they, this. They're just saying. Mm hmm just saying okay if if you're not uh, uh, if you're not uh, having erection mm. then don't just come near me okay so the anxiety builds up okay and it, it, sometimes i find it so hard like just getting erected and start fucking you know mm. it, it's it's hard because the woman has dejected she she just feels like when once she's next to you you should be erected Okay. I don't know. I don't know if this thing is uh, happening to you guys or no, they, or it's so, happening. So, but this so, is what I'm experiencing. So listen, listen to me, bro. And I'm glad that you came out open. So we see the need to actually help you. Now this is the reality. One, you are struggling with identity because you don't know who you are in this position. You don't know you're the man who is supposed to dictate the pace of the relationship and the marriage, including the sex life. That is one. Number two, you're seeking validation from her. You're actually thinking, maybe if I do this, she'll feel this. Maybe I'm doing this, that's why she feels this. Maybe because I don't have this erection, that's why she feels this. But remember this, one of the roles of a man in a marriage is to satisfy your woman sexually. Now, most women are so angry out here because they don't get enough sex. Most women dress so bad out here, slutty way of dressing, showing off their, 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 their buttocks, their thighs and their breasts, the cleavage. Not because... They want to, but because it's like a marketing strategy, because the man that they have is a weak man. So the problem is when you start to blame the woman instead of fixing yourself. Now you see you're already worried about the woman instead of worrying about fixing yourself and let the woman align. Because this woman is actually portraying a, a chaotic energy because you're not humbling her nerves. 
Sex humbles women's nerves. That's why a woman can wake up very angry in the morning and when you have sex with her satisfactorily, she's just a different woman. She now sings in the kitchen and cooks you the best meal you want. But you see, you cannot put out orders when you're failing in your department because one of your roles is, one, uh, and allow me to ask you this for free because you've come out open. So allow me to ask you this. You and your woman, do you share any bills? Do you, share, do you share any bills with your wife? Yeah, sometimes, yes. That's the point. You see, bro, if you're sharing bills with her and then you don't have an option, you, are, you have an obligation to satisfy in bed because if you don't, you see now she's thinking, now I'm playing the masculine role of providing. And this guy, the only role that I'm expecting her to play satisfactory is to have sex with me satisfactorily, but she's not, he's not doing it. So she starts to resent you. And the weird part is when she starts to resent you, she becomes like you. So she'll start portraying the energy that you have. That marriage will start to break. So the real deal is this. You need to fix yourself first before even thinking about satisfying her in bed. So simply do what I've just told you to do. Be consistent with it for the next about three months or so. You will suffer the consequences for these three months, but you're trying to fix something for the future. Because if this is a woman that you want to actually to stick around for the next uh, maybe 70 years, you have to fix the now. But you see, you're worried about her instead of worrying about fixing you. Do you get the point? Okay. Yeah, so the point starts with you. Okay. Fixing okay. you, the woman will align. Because you see, you are her choice. Whether she likes it or not, she chose you. But you are failing her because you fail to do what you need to do. You fail to lead from the front. You fail to fix the kitchen so that she adapts to that. She came in probably cooking the same food that she was taught to cook by the mother. And you've allowed that instead of fixing what has to be fixed. And now it's time for you uh, to fix what you have to fix. Because you see... The more she becomes chaotic, the more you'll become angry. And one day you'll get, you, you, you get to hit her because you're thinking now, this one has to give me sex because she's my wife. So you think it's an obligation that you need to get the sex. But you see, when she gives you the sex, you don't provide it satisfactorily. So she thinks, ah, I'm wasting my time and energy. And she becomes so angry about it. Now, you cannot fix her anger because anger is personal. What you need to do is you need to fix yourself so that you get to play your role as a man. And through playing your role as a man, the woman will align. She's actually looking for the masculine energy in you. But you see, there's a lot of feminine energy in you because of raising levels of estrogen. So you need to lower the estrogen, fix the testosterone, then the manhood comes in and the woman aligns to that masculine energy. Okay. Yeah. No, my son, no, my son. But I appreciate this guy. This guy came out, came out guns blazing because he was sure what he wanted. I believe he has gotten the help. If he has not, go back to my YouTube channel tomorrow and just watch the live and get to this part. You can cut it and just put it in your phone, let it ring in your head every single day.